Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from Rome. There were lots of firsts here in Rome these past couple of weeks and two of them may have been related. First, for the first time a papal address to the bishops following a synod was made public, actually handed out to the media at the final press gathering. That has a deep significance but more on that in a moment. Secondly, the presence of numerous faithful Catholic media organizations at the Synod. On more than one occasion and in various non-Catholic outlets, it came up quite a few times. For example, one media organization commenting on the liberal traditional drama said, quote, Another measure for whether some Vatican development has gotten the world's attention is whether activists start showing up at news conferences to press their agenda. And that's happened too. Already by Tuesday, members of a conservative Catholic group called Voice of the Family, which had earlier called the interim report a betrayal, were in the Vatican press hall. Notice there the term activists, as though mainstream media aren't activists. And on this point, one mainstream media reporter prefaced his question for one of the cardinals on Tuesday by mentioning the presence of, quote, conservative Catholic elements that were present in the press hall, close quote. Associated Press TV even contacted us here at Church Militant wanting to talk about the conservative Catholic take on the Synod. And on Saturday night, as everyone was packing up, one secular mainstream media reporter was complaining in the back of the room to a few people that she'd never seen these little Catholic groups at Vatican press conferences like she saw at this coverage. Well, we're all too, we were all too tired to remind the poor dear that some Catholics care about their church and actually kind of resent their presence in the press hall because of how they cozy up to liberals in the church and spin stories. But the point is that the presence of faithful Catholic media here cannot be understated. For example, we caught up with reporter Ed Penton. He's the bright fellow whose audio recording of Cardinal Walter Casper proved the Cardinal was lying when he denied ever saying that the African Cardinals should essentially be quiet. We asked Penton what impact he thought faithful Catholics from solid Catholic organizations might be having on the Synod. One still should try and get all sides of the opinion, um, but certainly, I mean, it's not, in some ways it's not so hard because you get one side of the opinion pretty loud, um, but you're trying to get the other side too, um, which is being kind of pushed out and being silenced. Uh, I was talking earlier about uh, social media and how that can help bring about a more vocal silent majority so it's not so silent. Now to be certain Catholic internet media showing up here in Rome wasn't by accident. It was pretty clear from events in the preceding months that the modernist progressive gang was going to try to ram something through. Ever since Cardinal Casper gave his now forgettable speech back in February that divorced and remarried Catholics should be able to receive Holy Communion, faithful Catholics started getting nervous the Synod began to take on the odor of so many other modernist takeovers. So, faithful Catholics set up shop right along the veteran secular crowd and started filing our own reports on the modernist progressive guys. Then came last Monday in the infamous working document, which said the homosexual orientation should be valued and that homosexuals brought gifts and qualities to the Catholic Church as homosexuals. And again, that all should be welcomed and irregular relationships brought positive values. Yeah, all that wording was in there. That one section set off an explosion in the Catholic internet world and the secular world. Very quickly, faithful cardinals and archbishops started getting in touch quietly, giving background info, granting interviews, and contributing to a faithful media backlash that caught synod liberals off guard and unprepared. The questioning in the daily press briefings got a little more direct as some bishops stammered and stuttered their way through non-responsive answers. It wasn't long before this all coalesced and an increasing drumbeat began that the synod was being manipulated by liberals, which it was, and wanting to advance the gay agenda, which they were. This escalated to the point of Cardinal Raymond Burke going on record with multiple outlets saying the Synod was being manipulated and the Pope himself would have to issue some kind of clarification about the doctrine, the same doctrine that was being run over by liberal papal appointees to the Synod. He wasn't alone. 
On Thursday, other cardinals demanded that the secrecy the modernists were using to cloak their efforts come to a stop. A battle occurred on the floor of the Synod Hall over the issue of whether to publish the more orthodox answers to the modernist working document. The liberals running the conference said no, and the more faithful prelates couldn't take it anymore. They challenged the entire process of how the Synod was being run and got up one by one demanding that their more faithful statements be published, just like that horrible working document had been. Synod leadership turned to the Pope and with a hand gesture, he agreed, and the so-called small circle summaries were published. The revolt was dutifully repeated by numerous bishops to their faithful Catholic media allies, and suddenly it was clear that something new had just taken place. The liberal bullies had been stood up to and punched squarely in the face. The faithful Catholic media had found its footing. One secular outfit described it this way, quote, that sort of talk stirred strong pushback from bishops concerned that welcome and positive elements could be read as code words for the Catholic Church going soft on its moral teaching. By midweek, the conservative uprising was strong enough that the Synod made the unprecedented decision to publish all the internal reports of small groups." Closed quote. And that brings us to Saturday night and the surprise announcement that the Pope's closing address to the Synod Fathers would be distributed to journalists. There's probably little chance of ever knowing if Cardinal Burke or any of the other Cardinals public pleas to the Holy Father and their interviews and all of that and to put an end to all of the confusion and issue a statement if any of that had any, any direct impact. We'll probably never know that. But Pope Francis ordered his closing address to the assembled bishops be made public, something never before done in a Synod. However you measure the impact, Faithful Catholic media gave largely faithful prelates a friendly ear, the opportunity to rally around a collective cause, to get mountains, mountains of inside information to those who would know what to do with it, and a way to get their message out, a message that in the end seems to have had a great influence on the final report, which bore little resemblance to that Monday disaster. And even there, sensitive to charges of lack of transparency, the Holy Father relented and not only had the final document handed out to journalists, another first, but he went a step further, requiring a vote not only of the document as a whole, but on each individual paragraph. And to take it to the extreme, he even had the vote tally for each of those paragraphs in favor of or opposed published with the document. And all of this changed in one remarkable Saturday. Coming to you from Rome, just down the road from St. Peter's Square, this is Michael Voris for Church Militant TV News. God love you.